Hello and welcome to Orion Today. I'm Joe Johnson and I am joined by Tracy Woodrum of Tea with Tracy fame. Yes. <laughs> How are you? Thanks for joining. I'm great. How are you today, Joe? I'm good. I, I would be in a better mood if I won my fantasy football game this past oh. weekend. That usually dictates my yeah. mood for a whole the week, week. The week. I'm in a survivor pool this year, and I'm yeah. still in it. So this is the first time I've made it to week four. There's been a lot of so. upsets in our survivor pool. Um, ours ended this week. We oh. declared a winner in week three wow. of the NFL season. It the, has been very it, unpredictable. Hey? Yeah, <laughs> it came down to two two uh, finalists, and the loser picked KC, who lost in an upset. Yes. Um, yep. And so we're going to reset the survivor pool and start all over again. But I've never okay. seen it end in, in I, the third week. Of yeah, the I have not heard that. Yeah, mine. Look, luckily, I had KC the week before. Yeah, yeah. But I had the Dolphins, which. You know, my brother and basically everybody who heard that was my pick said, are you sure? But yeah, uh, it turned out. So. They they upset the Ravens last week. And my sister, who ended up winning the entire survivor pool, yeah. she advanced because she picked the Dolphins up, set the Ravens. So, uh, yeah. So. Those dolphins, they're pretty fierce. And then, of course, the Lions. Uh, if you're a Lions fan, that'll put you in a bad mood. Yeah. Uh, they look like they had that game against the Vikings all wrapped up. And... Uh, they should have. I hate they, to they say it. Have. Same that old Lions. Heartbreaking. I, I didn't even pull out my Lions gear this, this <laughs> season yet. It's just, oh, heartbreaking. <laughs> I think as a Detroit fan, I want to see the Lions do well, but uh, I've adopted another team as, as my team. So <laughs> until, <laughs> Who's the until, team you've adopted? I, I'm, I'm the, a Rams it. guy. I oh, love Rams. the Rams. Okay. And right. Stafford, I'm rooting for Stafford yeah. over at the Rams. I've always yeah. been a fan of his. And now, you know, he goes over to the Rams, uh, wins a Super Bowl in his first year. So I'm a fan. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice. And uh, it's fall. Uh, fall mm -hmm. officially arrived last week, uh, September 22nd. Are you a fall uh, fan? I am. I mean, I love summer. I mm -hmm. do love the sunshine in summer, but I there's just something about the crisp air and being able to wear different clothes instead of just all shorts all the time. And yeah. I do. I love fall. And I mean, who doesn't love donuts and cider? Going to the cider mills. Yeah. So. And I love the Halloween season. Uh, that's always a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, this isn't a commercial plug or anything, but Spirit Halloween mm -hmm. opened yesterday at Great Lakes Crossing. I love going in there and just browsing around looking at yeah. all their Halloween oh, costumes and Oh, yeah, there's and so many fun stuff. costumes. So. Yeah, so I look forward to that. And here in Lake Orion, I think the official kickoff to the Halloween season is the Zombie Walk. Are you familiar with the mm, Zombie Walk? I have not heard of the Zombie Walk. Is this so that took place last week, Saturday. Okay. And it originated uh, with Lloyd Coe, who owns Ed's Broadway Gift in Costume in downtown Lake Orion. Yeah. Uh, he wanted to do something special for his birthday about, I don't know, oh, it's the ninth annual, so nine years ago. Wow. And so they did a little zombie walk in downtown Lake Orion, and it was pretty popular. And they uh, they do it every year, and they've turned it into a fundraiser for the uh, the lighted Christmas parade of all things, and so it's a lot of fun. And um, they had I did a quick count, a little head count, it looked like there were more than fifty people taking part this year. Wow! And so what they do is they all gather at Ed's uh, Broadway Gift, and uh, those who need makeup applied will have makeup applied. And they all dress up in, in various characters. Uh, this is kind of a neat moment. I, I always oh, encourage them to <laughs> gather in the uh, the Flint Street alleyway yes. uh, where they all stagger and stumble toward the camera. Um, but the goal is it's kind of a pub crawl. Uh, they went over to Fork and Pint first. And then um, they were supposed to go over to 313 Pizza. But 313 Pizza was having plumbing issues for some reason. Oh. And they had to ask their customers to leave because it was that bad wow. so they had to skip 313 they went uh, there they are going past sagebrush uh, they stopped in at Johnny Black's and then uh, they ended up at the uh, American Legion on uh, Lapeer Road so it's a really fun event and everyone fun. has a lot of fun and I would love to participate or at least go watch as yeah, they're, yeah. Uh, you know going down the streets next year well there was one moment where a car was stopped at a red light and they all kind of climbed on the guy's <laughs> car and I'm 
if you don't know what's going <laughs> on, you got to be like freaking <laughs> out. That is true. That could be quite <laughs> scary if you don't know. So. And that's kind of how I discovered it a few years ago. I, I, luckily, I had my video camera in the trunk of my car, and I was driving through the village, and I saw a bunch of zombies hanging out in front of Ed's. <laughs> and I actually parked and got out, and I said, what's going on? And they said, oh, we do this zombie walk, and that's how I learned about wow. it. And they've been I know it's it like Lake year. Orion's best kept secret because yeah. I only live a few blocks away from Ed's, and I've yeah. never heard of this. We'll get before. the word out next yeah. year, see if we can get those numbers even higher. But uh, what a fun event. It's yeah. really cool. Oh. And, and, and outside of the zombie walk, the village that night was just bustling yeah. just foot traffic and, and people walking and eating and shopping it was really great to see oh, i love that energy when yeah. the downtown is full and it is yeah. it's it's bustling right now and uh another big event that happened last weekend um was elo palooza did you are you familiar with Elopalooza? i am i've been to it in the past this year i was visiting one of my daughters at college that, okay. that day but it's a great event we brought in the daisy project a couple weeks ago to talk about elo palooza and uh for those of you who are not familiar with it it's uh it's a concert uh all-day concert music festival at wildwood amphitheater uh there's something like eight or ten bands that perform throughout the day uh, I caught video of uh, one ton trolley and Levi boot cut in the straight leg, uh, <laughs> which I think is a hilarious name for yeah. a band. Um, and they had a great turnout, beautiful weather, and uh, vendors all over the property selling food and trinkets. They had a cornhole tournament uh, sponsored by Motor City Cornhole. I played in um, that before. I oh yeah? yeah, yeah. That that specific cornhole tournament didn't yeah. get too far, but it was a <laughs> lot of fun. So. And it's all a fundraiser to make the community more accessible. Um, the Daisy Project has been responsible for some upgrades in the community, which you're going to see here in a second. Um, but they helped upgrade Friendship Park. There's a little mm -hmm. playground over there. They um, had these uh, wheelchair swings installed, this, uh, this what do they call that, the whirl thing? And, uh, and then, of course, Miracle Field at Friendship Park, yes. they helped get that up and going too. So um, they're and making this community uh, a better place for people with special needs and, and uh, Alopalooza is their big fundraiser um, of the year. So yes. uh, it was I, nice to see it was well attended. And I know that it's great, not only for our community, but I know that there are families, um, you know, that have family members with special needs that come from all, all of the surrounding areas yeah. to, to utilize that park. And it's great that we can be that, uh, that location yeah we're leading by example here in lake orion and yeah. and i asked the daisy project you know what's next and they said well they want to start going into neighboring communities and get them up to speed too so oh, i think they look at us as an example and hopefully the neighboring communities will follow suit so yes uh, another, another thing that happened last weekend um you know one of the things i love about lake orion is is its history it has such a rich history and and when you're in the village you'll see buildings that uh, are labeled 1900 mm -hmm. you know like a uh, 313 pizza it says yeah, 1900 on it. um the uh, bean to go coffee i think the its building ha at one time had 1881 on it i think wow. um and so there's a lot of history in, in downtown lake orion and in orion township um, but I found out just recently that a local church, the Lake Orient United Methodist Church, uh, celebrated 150 years. Wow. 150 years, the LO United Methodist Church. Now, when it was built originally, it occupied the space where AutoZone is uh, on Lapeer Road near Flint Street. There's a picture of the church in its original location wow. in 1900. And um, so it was over by AutoZone. Uh, and then the parishioners at the time, uh, the, the railroad track went right past the church and they said, we got to move it. So the uh, congregation at the church nowadays, uh, they have this miniature version of the church that uh, they bring out for parades and stuff. They recreated that move uh, from uh, Lapeer Street uh, all the way to the current uh, location of the church uh, to celebrate the 150th anniversary, which blows my mind. That is um, wow. Outside the church, they, they sang some hymns, and it was really neat to see, a really cool small town event, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, they had their service and then a harvest uh, meal after the service, um, but it was really neat to see, and uh, so much history there. 
Um, the United Methodist Church has been part of the Lake Orion community for such a long time. And, you know, they told me it's not just a church. It's a, it's a gathering place. Yep. It's a community center. Um, so congratulations to uh, Lake Orion United Methodist Church on 150 years. That That's is cool. amazing. And they do a lot with the community and yeah. for the community. So. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, now this past weekend, uh, you know, I, we said fall just arrived. So Orion Township, they have events that they plan throughout the year. There's summer sizzle back in July. Um, but they came up with a relatively new event. I think this was only the third year they've done it called the Fall Festival of Family Fun. Oh, and that is a mouthful. I'm glad yeah. you had to say it. <laughs> <laughs> and they, you know, the township uh, a number of years ago purchased Camp Agawam, and, and their goal is to preserve it uh, as this natural green space, and it is awesome. Camp is. Agawam is awesome. Is. So uh, the township has uh, created this event uh, to encourage Lake Orion families to enjoy the fall season. It started out a little rainy, and I was kind of holding off on going down there because I can't bring my camera out in the rain. Uh, but it cleared up, and people came out for the fall festival. So here's a little news story we put together on this past Saturday's uh, Fall Festival of Family Fun. On Saturday, September 24th, the Lake Orion community was invited to come out to Camp Agawam for the Fall Festival of Family Fun. The threat of rain early on did not discourage families from coming out, and the turnout was tremendous. People showed up at 1045 in the rain. They were ready to go. <laughs> they were not scared of the rain at all, and it turned out beautiful, so it's good. This is an amazing park for, um, to have in our system. Um, it's very untouched, it's rustic. The, you know, it's a really great fall atmosphere here. Um, even in the summertime, it's a beautiful place to go. It's kind of a hidden gem in Orion Township. Um, when we took ownership of it a couple years ago, we wanted to keep it a large green space, and that is our goal, to not build anything on it, but just maintain it as a park and um, a piece of beautiful land. The rain transitioned to a perfect fall day and visitors enjoyed a petting zoo, crafts, inflatables, food, and music. A hay wagon ride took families to a pumpkin patch where the little ones were able to grab a fall souvenir. And thanks to the voter-approved Parks Millage, the entire event was free to the community. So um, with our Parks Millage, we are, our goal is to offer, I think, at least three large free events throughout the year. Um, this is one, Summer Sizzle, another one. All of our summer concerts are free to the public. Um, we want to offer as much as we can without costing our taxpayers to, um, too much. Next up on the calendar is the township's popular Boo Bash event. Families are invited to take part in some Halloween fun on Friday, October 14th, beginning at 5.30 p.m. at the Orion Center. Pre-registration is required and space is limited. For more information, visit orionparks.com. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, there was a really cute moment when I was shooting video of the hay wagon and I was holding the camera up and I was getting ready to pull away and I said, all right, everyone wave and hold up your pumpkins. And I hear this little voice go, happy video Aww. and i said happy <laughs> video to you too and it drove off it was really cute um, but what a fun event and a great way to, to usher in the, the fall season and beautiful area like i said and yeah. all the things uh, that you just saw will be on this week's newscast we do a newscast every two weeks uh on tv news uh so i'll have that finished and edited by the end of the day today and uh, you'll be able to find it on YouTube, and we'll air it on our channel uh, over the next couple of weeks. So uh, now we're going to welcome Tanya Hamilton of the North Oakland Community Coalition. Did I get that right? You did get it right. One Thank of you my for favorite community me. organizations, yes. and uh, I know we have a lot to talk about today. Um, uh, that organization does great things in the community of trying to keep our our young people safe um, and healthy. So uh, I think the main thing we want to talk about today is the, the new suicide prevention hotline. I heard that's really taken off. I heard that they've been getting a lot of calls. Do you want to talk about that a little bit to start things off? 
I do, yes. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to talk about this. We've actually been talking about it all throughout the month of September. September is National Suicide Prevention Month. So this is a really great month to um, bring awareness to a new suicide and crisis lifeline that actually rolled out nationwide in July. And what we have done nationally um, and supported through SAMHSA, which is Substance Abuse and Mental Health um, Services Administration, they rolled out a 988 number that we can all remember okay. as easily as we yeah, remember nice and easy. 911. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I know we've all seen the longer uh, telephone numbers that are shared for suicide prevention hotlines. Mm -hmm. This 988 number is going to allow us to make sure everyone can say that number in their head just yes. as easily as 911 and uh, make help available faster for everyone. What, when, in, in what situation would you, would you encourage someone of any age to pick up that phone and dial that number? Whenever they are feeling like they are in crisis or even very importantly, when someone they know is in crisis, mm -hmm. meaning that there is no time to wait until tomorrow and call your doctor or your counselor or your uh, recovery coach. Um, so this lifeline will help in both instances of maybe suicidal ideation as well as any kind of substance issue. Okay. So that's, that's what's different between 988 and 911. And then what that national number does is immediately direct you to local resources where help can be received immediately. Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. does, does someone arrive at the home? What, what happens when they call that number? Like, it doesn't yeah. act like EMS, right? Like, you don't pick it up, dial the number, and someone knocks on your door? That's a really good point, Joe, because I, oftentimes I think people are hesitant to call crisis lines because they think that the police are going to show up at their door. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. In fact, studies show that oftentimes when someone is in crisis, what they really need is someone to talk to in that moment and just help them with some coping strategies to, you know, take, to, to just deflate the situation in, in time for them to be able to maybe t the next day reach out to their doctor for help. Um, sometimes that's not the case and sometimes someone is in immediate danger and needs immediate help. Um, but the person who answers that lifeline is going to assess the situation and figure out what the next steps are. Wow. Okay. Boy. That's yeah. uh, admirable to, to be on the other end of, of getting that call Isn't and, it? and talking yes. them off the ledge, so to speak. So. Yeah, and there is so much training that goes involved into working at a crisis line like mm. this. They're very well-trained um, staff. Mm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's uh, we showed a graphic a moment ago. Uh, there's a website, 988lifeline.org. Um, what, do what does that website explain, just kind of what we talked about? Exactly what we yeah. talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's great. Um, all right. Uh, so what else uh, is going on with the NOCC nowadays? Well, as you know, uh, our two focuses are mental wellness initiatives in the community and um, substance misuse prevention, mm -hmm. specifically with our youth. We want to make sure underage use does not happen. Um, so along with this month rolling out 988 and talking about suicide prevention, we have also started implementing mental health first aid trainings. So we have two staff members who are certified facilitators of that program and can offer this training throughout the community. It's a full day training, so it is a time commitment, but it is a great way to spread awareness in our community of how to help people you know who are experiencing behavioral changes, to understand what they're going through, and to help them seek help. So we're encouraging as much of the community as possible to take advantage of these free trainings. We've actually received an Oakland County grant to offer these trainings for free to our community through next April. Wow. So we're happy to be able to offer them free of charge until then. Um, we're also getting ready to roll out what is called QPR training. And the QPR stands for Question, Persuade, and Resources. And that's a smaller, a shorter training. It lasts about an hour. And it's a suicide prevention training specifically, just to really be, the, you know, be able to help talk someone through a crisis situation and connect them to resources. Okay. Both of those trainings are not meant to make us um, service providers. Sure. They are to give us the 
the knowledge we need to just really talk someone through what they're experiencing in the moment and help them seek the care that will best benefit them. So I think the more we can roll these trainings out in the community, um, the stronger that we'll be and the more able we are to help our neighbors. Yes, the more understanding and giving community members tools, like you said, just to be that maybe that first line because it might yeah. be that we have the interaction with somebody who's going through something and if they're afraid to make a call or to reach out we can at least have some of those initial conversations yeah. and help direct them. That's great. And how many of us know CPR or know basic first aid? We've been right. trained in that so that we can be that first set of hands that are able to help. This yeah. is the same thing. And with the prevalence of mental health challenges that exist today, yeah. it's really important that we're all able yes. to provide this. I've read, I've read articles about how anxiety and depression, how they're on the rise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, especially and, you know, with what we went through the past two years. Well, well that, but yeah. it also is attributed to our devices and mm. a lot of teens and younger, they're always in front of them and you know, being subject to you know, the peer pressures and societal, you know, what people think they should be looking like and acting like and yeah. that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure. It used to be you went to school and if things were a little tough you went home and ah, oh, you're around your family. Now it's just <laughs> it's constantly there. So yeah. and, and there's a lot of pressure for parents too yeah. to keep up with all of this yep. and know how to best support their children. Right. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of which, I've been reading these headlines over the past week or two with TikTok and, and social media, there's these weird challenges that young people are, are giving into, which blows my mind. And the most recent one was cooking chicken chicken in like cough medicine or something. Mm -hmm. And of course there was the Tide Pod challenge. Yeah. And these young people, they see these challenges on social media and they try to do them and, and they're getting hospitalized. Yes. I would imagine that's, a, that's a, a new thing that the NOCC has to deal with and educate parents about. It is, there are so many different trends happening now and just going back a second and talking about social media on its own, um, that is a huge area I think of education uh, for parents that we need to focus on because many parents aren't aware that these challenges or these trends are existing. So that's something that we're hoping to do this fall is offer some um, presentations for parents to, you know, learn what's happening now and then continue to offer these updates on trends with them by establishing a group we're calling In The Loop, which stands for Lake Orion and Oxford Parents. Okay. And it's a group that they can, they can uh, they can engage in any way they feel comfortable. They can just follow us on social, they can come to presentations, um, they can join our newsletter, but we will be able to keep them updated on trends like cooking chicken in cough syrup. Cooking okay, <laughs> chicken in cough, I have not heard that one. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's going around. Why? <laughs> yeah. I don't know I, how these things I, originate. Right. I, I don't Who get it. comes up with them? And yeah. Yeah. Now, I attended, uh, years ago, I attended an NOCC presentation at the library where you had a uh, teenager's bedroom kind of set up on the stage in the meeting room there. And, and it, there were all kinds of items that were scattered throughout the, the bedroom. And the, the point of the presentation was to educate parents on what they should look for in their teenager's room. Um, you know, a parent has a right to go into their child's room until they're 18 and get out. <laughs> um, they have a right to go in there and see what's in there. And imagine you see like Tide Pods or a cough medicine or something, and a parent who's not in the loop right. might not see those things as a red flag. So right. your organization is like, here's what th some things you should look for. Like like take uh, the, the air, you know, the compressed air cans that you dust your keyboards with. If you find one of those in your child's bedroom, they may be misusing it, right? They could be. There are, and you can purchase them on Amazon. You, there are Pepsi cans, Coke cans that the tops screw off of and things can be hidden inside. And I would even go a step further, Joe, and say not only is it a parent's right to go in their child's bedroom, it's their responsibility to yeah. go in their child's bedroom. Um, we are the best um, advocate for our own child, mm -hmm. and it's our responsibility to keep in, in to keep on top of who they're spending their time with, what they're 
um, consuming. Those are all right. basic parent responsibilities. Yeah, a lot of parents want to be their their teenager's friend and buddy, and mm -hmm. uh, you have to be a parent first, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So lots of things to look for, a lot of responsibilities on a parent to, to keep them safe, but uh, there's always going to be new challenges. That's so, right. Yeah. Yep. Was there anything else that you wanted to, to talk about? Um, well, we do have some uh, resources that we've begun offering at the coalition in, the, in our office. Um, one of them is marijuana lockboxes. Oh, yeah. So we all know marijuana mm -hmm. is now legal in Michigan, right? And we have a brand new dispensary right here in Lake yeah. Orion, and we it do. was bustling. <laughs> it is popular. It is popular, <laughs> and so now, you know, as far as the laws go in Michigan, it is treated very much like alcohol. So. Our message from the coalition is that just like alcohol for adult use, we're looking for safe, responsible, and legal mm -hmm. use of those substances. Um, but we all know that as, as is for alcohol, same for THC, underage use is not safe for the developing right. brain. So marijuana prevention in our youth is still very, very important. And we know that if parents are going to keep marijuana in the home, um, with children present, that locking it up is very important, especially since we now have so many forms of it that could look attractive to even younger children in mm -hmm. edibles and, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, that, that surprised me when I, I covered the grand opening of, of the dispensary here in Lake Orion, and that's probably the thing that surprised me the most was uh, oatmeal cookie pie things and oh, gummies yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, it looks just like, like desserts. Like, and yeah, candy it's like yeah, and, yeah, it's like a candy store. And imagine a parent buying that stuff and leaving it laying around the home. If mm -hmm. you have young yeah. people, they see gummies or cookies right. or whatever. Yeah. So lock boxes are available at the coalition free of charge. We've actually offered a couple of drive-through distribution dates recently and we had a great turnout where people could just drive through the parking lot. We held one at Orion Township uh, and then we held another one in the parking lot of the Lake Orion Police Department um, and it was no questions asked. Just drive through, get your box mm -hmm. and move on. Yeah. Um, and so that was great. We plan to offer more of those uh, this fall. Um, but if any, at any time someone wants to come and pick one up for from us or have it delivered, we're happy to do that as well. Okay. Great. We'd love to help you get the word out on that. Thank that's, you. That's fantastic. I did want to ask again, the classes that you're offering to the community, yes. um, when are those being offered and how does somebody get signed up? So the next mental health first aid training is taking place on the 12th of October. Okay. The location, King of Kings Lutheran Church, is offering their space to us, which we're very thankful for. Um, so that will be the next one. We do have um, a church, um, Christ the Redeemer is actually offering a training to their parishioners that next Saturday, the 15th of October. But we are encouraging any business organization who would like to offer this training to their staff or to the people they provide yeah. service to, please call us. We can set that up and make it happen for that you. That would be great. Wow, mm -hmm. that you can even offer it to a business or organization. Yes. I mean, just think what we could do if we have awareness and some basic tools spread throughout our communities and businesses. Absolutely, yeah. and, and again, the beautiful thing is that until the end of April of 23, it is free to our community uh, thanks to this grant. It is, the Mental Health First Aid Training has a price attached to it. It's a national organization, a national curriculum, and so there is, it, it can be quite costly to train a staff, but until April, we're able to provide it for free. So wow. I'm hoping many take advantage of it. Yes, absolutely. I hope so as well. And yeah, I'm sure I'm this is all on your website. It is all on our website. N-O-C-C-M-I.org. Correct. Uh, I'm sure everything we've talked about here today is on there somewhere. So yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for everything that you and your organization are doing uh, in this community. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Yes, thank and you so much. Thanks for coming and joining us yes. today. Thank you. All right. We're going to now move on to uh, one of the last, I think the last uh, music performance in Lake Orion. Um, it, it rained on the day of this concert. Luckily, we have a backup plan whenever it rains in Lake Orion. The concert was moved into 20 Front Street, which oh, is a beautiful a uh, venue to see venue. live music. It's, yes. it's really awesome. So uh, the last band to play was uh, The Brevet. Uh, which uh, Joey was telling me is kind of folk music, Americana. Uh, and so let's take a look at a performance from the Brevet from the last LO Life concert of the season.
Like I said, what a great venue, uh, 20 Front Street uh, in downtown Lake yes. Orion. If you've never been, you got to go. Great music all the time. And mm -hmm. there have been times where I, I'll go to 20 Front Street to shoot video of a, a performance. And I don't know who the band is. I don't right. know what to expect. And then they play, and you're like, they are amazing. Why are they not more famous? Right. Uh, it's an incredible concert lineup. So yes. They yeah. bring in artists from all over. So, yeah. yeah. And the venue is amazing. Like, like you said, you don't even have to know who the, the artist is, the band. You just need to get in there and experience it. Yeah, it's an intimate setting, yeah. beautiful setting. Check out 20 Front Street. The sticks are fantastic. Yeah. So, Tracy, you were in uh, uh, earlier today uh, to do another episode of your, your podcast. What was yes. the topic today? Yes, on TV Tracy today, I had on a loan officer, James Lutz, and he was talking about some of the different factors that go into your interest rate. Um, so many people think that interest rate is just what it is. It, there's a one size fits all. If I'm getting a 30 year fixed mortgage, this is my interest rate. You know, if I'm, you know, putting 5% of, that's not the case. There are so many factors that go into it. So that's what we were talking about today that, um, you know, your credit, the, the amount of money you're putting down, there's so many different factors that go into what your interest rate would be. Interesting. So, and yeah. last week, I saw that uh, you had a guest on uh, Mr. Oh, Scott uh, Ateo. Uh, Ateo, yes, that's right. Greens Masters, Lawn and Pest. Yeah, yeah. he was talking about, um, you know, pest control. And, you know, because, I mean, I, along with, I think, many viewers thought, okay, the colder season's coming, you know, the cold and winter's going to kill off all the mosquitoes and pests. And that is not the case. I was surprised to learn that they just kind of hibernate and then they come back out pick up where they left off in the spring yeah. so and yes. if uh you have any little entrances to your home there they may be looking for a warm place yes. for the winter right yep so he gave us some tips and things that we should be doing you know taking tours around our homes to uh to make sure that we're kind of sealing them off and securing them for for the winter so we don't have any unwanted visitors <laughs> <laughs> So. Yeah, oh, that gives me the heebie-jeebies yeah. just thinking about that. So. Yeah, and well, so starting 
next week. I just want to say, starting next week, we're, I'm going to be doing a local election series. I know you do oh, okay. a, 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 on TV a lot with the elections. Yeah, but we have candidates coming in uh, last week and this week. They come on and, and do a little stump speech, I yeah. guess. Yeah. So, well, mine is not, it's not any, you know, a candidate is not coming to talk about themselves, mm -hmm. per se. They're coming on to explain the position that they're running for, mm -hmm. um, just to give voters, you know, a little more explanation as to, well, here's what this role does and why it's important, because those local v votes, um, they make such an impact. Yeah. So it's important to be informed. Yeah, and I'm sure as uh, Election Day gets closer in November, we'll be talking more about that. Um, but uh, it's going to be a big election. Uh, I know the, the primary that we had in August, those are usually poorly attended. Um, but I expect the turnout this November to be huge. Um, there's a, a lot a lot on the yeah. slate this year. So. Well, and if you live in Lake Orion, you really should make sure that you're getting out to vote because we have a number of different local um, you know, topics that we're gonna be yeah. voting on. So um, I, in, in my series, I'm gonna have a couple people come on and educate us on those, like what those, a lot of millages, what do those mean? How do yeah. they impact you? Um, so you're definitely gonna want to, uh, to get out and vote. Yeah, yeah. So. Like I said, we'll talk more about that as it gets closer. Uh, right now, we're going to uh, have uh, some representatives of Orion Township uh, talk about uh, events and happenings and activities that are going to be uh, going on within the next month or so. Uh, let's go to Orion Update. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Orion Update. My name is Jenny Bati, and I'm with the Township and I'm joined by Aaron Watley, our Parks Director. Now we are here to talk about all things parks today and he asked me to meet him at Peterson Lodge today. So Aaron, what's going on with Peterson Lodge? Tell me about it. So we're out at Camp Aguam. Um, it's oh, one of thank the, you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, one of the Township uh, public parks. Mm -hmm. So it's about 140 acres. We have camping, lodges, playground, beautiful beach. And then what Jenny was speaking of, uh, right behind us we have Peterson Lodge. So this is the old kind of mess hall for the old Boy Scout camp. Mm -hmm. We've had it really shut down, um, just it's kind of an unusable condition and we plan in 2023 to do a major renovation to it. So the plan here is to completely demo it down. It'll be a roughly a, a 40 by 60, 40 by 100, try to go as big as we can, open air pavilion um, with garage doors that will close down, heating inside, <clears throat> a restroom, and kind of a little, uh, I guess, kitchenette for caterers to come in, kind of prep, uh, have prep food that's already prepared off site, and then serve it. Uh, and it's just a great space, beautiful views right on Tommy's Lake, and, uh, yeah, we're excited about it. I mean, you can't get better views than that. I no, mean, that'll perfect. be incredible. Yep. And that'll be a destination to rent out for all sorts of parties and events. Absolutely. Yeah, we have great things here. So if we have a nice uh, wedding venue, large party venue, we have a small chapel where you can get married, and then a beautiful beach down here that we're going to be planning to do some expansion to as well. That's exciting. It's pretty small, but we're going to look to expand it out a little bit. Now. Can you kayak out on that beach? Or on uh, the lake, I should say? So yeah, you can kayak out on the lake. Um, actually, right over to the side here, mm -hmm. we're, I mean, we're really focusing a lot of our millage dollars on this area as our last hurrah. And so over in that area, we're gonna be putting um, an accessible kayak launch. So you can come here, um, take a little boardwalk down, launch your kayak really easily for any ability and just enjoy the beautiful, the beautiful Tommy's Lake. And especially in the fall, you get the beautiful colors and it's just, uh, yeah, it's spectacular out here. If you haven't been here, you need to make sure you take a trip. Beautiful hiking trails, yep. disc golf course, playground. Um, 
the amenities are amazing. You so. have the Fire Bowl with some shows that get put on over there, some concerts, magic shows, all sorts of things. Yeah, I, I hope we make a trip over to the Fire Bowl because really friends of Camp Aguam and Tommy's Lake, they've really invested some, um, some great dollars from some of their fundraisers. And so it's just a beautiful uh, kind of intimate atmosphere, some music, some nice mm -hmm. natural Michigan stones, dolomite that'll step up. Um, they uplight the, the lighting canopy or the tree canopy. It's just, man, it's good. This is a good place to be out here. Thanks to Jenny and Aaron talking about some updates over at mm -hmm. Camp Agawam. Again, beautiful yes. resource. Um, and something that's going to be coming up soon, which we'll um, may be vi revisiting in, in a few minutes, but um, uh, the Boo Bash is an Orient Township event that's going to be coming up to celebrate Halloween in a few weeks, and that's a lot of fun. That's yes. really cool to see all the costume kids trick-or-treating. So. Yes. Uh, we're going to turn our attention to sports now. Uh, we're uh, deep into the uh, high school football season, which I really enjoy. I do the well. Dragons have had sort of an up and down uh, varsity football season, uh, but they just got a win uh, last Friday, and um, they are traveling to, oh, I'm trying to remember where they're going next week. Uh, was it Stony Creek? West Bloomfield this Friday. Uh, the Lakers are going to West Bloomfield. Then they return home for homecoming, which uh, yes. is a lot of fun. That's I'm always looking a forward fun to game. that game. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so let's take a look. Uh, Joey Tysek put together this piece on uh, all the updates in soccer and football and volleyball and cross country. Hello and welcome back to Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm your host Joey Tysek, and although it feels like the spring season just ended. We are already halfway through the fall sports season. Today, we will give a few updates on varsity football, volleyball, boys soccer, and the cross country teams. Lake Orion Dragon football team is looking to continue their winning ways after back-to-back -back wins against Oak Park and Oxford. On September 16th, the Rochester Adams Highlanders came into Dragon territory to take on Lake Orion. Adams is a force to be reckoned with, and Lake Orion would have to bring their A game to defeat the state final runner-up just a year ago. Right away, the Dragons made it tough on themselves as on the first play of the game, T.R. Hill fumbles on a quarterback draw and put Adams into the red zone immediately. Adams capitalized on the Lake Orion mistake as Parker Pico threw a touchdown pass to Tate Pico for the first four of the game. The defenses stiffened up for a bit until late in the first, where Adams kicked a 41-yard field goal to extend the lead to 10 for the Highlanders. Lake Orion finally responded as on their first play of the following drive, Billy Roberson ran for an 80-yard touchdown. Then again, on their following drive, Roberson would do it again, this time for 85 yards and give the Dragons the lead 14-10. Adams would get another field goal to be within one point of the Dragons, and then with 30 seconds left in the half, Tate Pico would score his second touchdown of the night, this time on the ground, giving Adams the lead back 20-14. This momentum going into the half continued into the second half as Adams would run away with this game as Park, Parker Pico ran for a touchdown and threw two more to Brady Prescorn. The nail in the coffin was when Pico and Prescorn connected on a 4th and 30 touchdown giving them 42-14 to 14 lead. Lake Orion would get another late touchdown in the 4th to bring their score to 21 and that would be the final score as Adams would win 42-21. to 21. Then, on September 23rd, the Dragons would travel to Stony Creek for what basically was a must-win scenario. If they were still looking to make the postseason this year, Lake Orion was trying to bounce back from the Adams loss, but Billy Roberson was trying to pick up right where he left off, and he did just that as he ran for an 80-yard touchdown on the first snap of the game. Lake Orion later hit a 43-yard field goal, which was a career-long for Will Hoffman, the sophomore kicker. In the second quarter, the Cougars got on the board with a quarterback run from Justin Taylor for the six-yard touchdown. 10-7 would be the score until halfway through the third quarter when Roberson did it once again, this time scoring from 21 yards out, and that would be his ninth touchdown of the season. Taylor would score again for the Cougars with just another quarterback sneak to pull Stony Creek within three. And then with just over two minutes left in the game, the Dragons would seal the deal with a touchdown from junior running back Raymond Payne giving the Dragons the win, 24-14. In the coming weeks, Lake Orion will travel to West Bloomfield, and then homecoming will be against Clarkston. They are still in the playoff hunt, but they will need to find a victory against some tough upcoming opponents to get in. 
We will make sure to keep you updated on the next episode. Lake Orion Volleyball is known for being a volleyball powerhouse as they were state champs in 2018, semifinalists in 2019, and have made deep playoff runs every year since. This has been the first year in a while where they are struggling, so to speak, and Lake Orion always schedules a lot of top volleyball schools and tournaments, so they face some of the toughest competition throughout the year. Some notable wins, however, are against Detroit Country Day, Oxford, Novi, and Rochester Adams. The losses are against Clarkson, Bloomfield Hills, and Marion, who may be the best team in the state. The Dragons' record sits at 10-11-2, but they are now entering league play where they are expected to win most of those matchups. Either way, Lake Orion will be one to watch out for as the season progresses, as head coach Tony Scavarda knows how to prepare his team, and Lake Orion also has a Michigan Miss Volleyball candidate in Nina Horning, who is trying to make her senior season a special one. The Varsity Boys soccer team has also had an up and down season so far. Their record sits at 6-7-4. The Dragons have looked much better than their record may show as they recently played Oxford on September 22nd at home as the Dragons seemed to control the ball well and were able to play good defense on the Wildcats. However, the Wildcat goalie was almost impossible to score on. Luckily, the Dragons were able to put one in against him but could only come away with a tie as both teams were stymied on offense. Lake Orion had many opportunities but just couldn't connect. This has been a trend for the Dragons as their offense has good corner setups and have hit a lot of goals from corner kicks, but their defense keeps them in so many games. If the Dragons are able to figure out how to get more goals in the net, they will be a tough out when it comes to the playoffs. In the coming weeks, the Dragons will face off against West Bloomfield, Summit Academy, Utica, Seaholm, and Notre Dame Prep as they approach the offs the postseason. And now here's Ian Locke for the cross country updates. The Lake Orion men's cross country team welcomed in their new head coach, Andrew McDonald, to take over for LO legend, coach Stan Ford, who retired after the 2022 track season this past June. McDonald brings years of cross country and track coaching experience and inherits a team in transition. The Dragons are trying to replace a senior class that rewrote the record books at LOHS and finished in the top 15 at the state finals in division one in 2021. The men's team competed in their first meet of the 2022 season at Cass Benton Park in Northville for the Mustang Invitational. The Dragons finished in seventh place out of 17 teams in this 11th and 12th grade meet. Hello, senior Eddie Cromwell paced the team with a 19th place. He was followed by Michael Dracos in 41st and closely followed by Luke Puritan in 44th. Sean Stein, 51st and Ryan Murray at 52nd place completed the scoring for the Dragons. The Lady Dragons also competed and finished in ninth place overall for the 11th and 12th grade race. The story of the Lady Dragons is their underclassmen. A new batch of strong runners in the 9th and 10th grade classes are what will bring the Lady Dragons success in 2022. Ninth grader Lillian Brodowski led all Lake Orion runners with a 5K time of 22 minutes, 39 seconds and a 19th overall finish in the 9th and 10th grade race. A fine start to her high school career. Ello traveled to the Avril Invitational at Kensington Metro Park on Saturday, September 10th and competed against teams from all over Oakland County. The Dragons were led by individual medalist Blake Puritan at 19th in the varsity gold race, finishing with a lifetime best 1744. In the bronze race, Oliver House finished in fifth place in a time of 1952. The Lake Orion men's cross country scored 119 points and finished eighth place out of 15 teams. The Lady Dragons varsity scored 188 points and finished eighth out of 11 teams competing. Again, they were led by their ninth and 10th graders. Sophomore Addie Verlinden was the lone medal winner for LO coming in 23rd. Freshman Nadia for Doran Chick and Elizabeth Crawford were 44th and 45th overall for the Dragons. Both teams then moved on to compete at the first OAA Jamboree held at Lake Orion High School on September 13th. This tough home course saw the varsity and JV men and women sport solid times in this Red Division showdown. The men finished in fifth place out of six with 106 points. Highlights of the meet included sophomore Blake Puritan finishing in eighth place in a PR time of 17:10. Senior Eddie Cromwell followed in 15th place with a 17:37, also a personal best. Troy would take the win with 39 points, followed by Clarkston with 45 points. The JV men would finish a solid third place with 83 points. 
junior Oliver House would pace the Dragons JV squad with a team best 1917 and a seventh place finish. Oxford continued their dominance from 2021, showing why they are one of the top teams in all of Oakland County. They took the win with 32 points. Troy was second with 50. Addison Verlinden would lead the Dragons, coming in 14th overall. The Lady Dragons JV squad would finish in second behind a dominant Clarkston, who placed four runners in the top 10. Senior Kyra Andrews and sophomore Luciana LaCroix came in fifth and eighth overall to pace the Dragons. Both teams competed on Friday, September 23rd at the Waterford Mott Fall Classic. The varsity team finished a strong 7th place out of 21 teams with 189 points. Blake Pearden led the team with a 17th place finish in 17-13. Ray Lucero ran a season best 17-34 to take 33rd, followed by Eddie Cromwell in 43rd place. Horatio Lopez was 47th, and Max Huvener in 1757 rounded out the scoring in 49th place. This was the first time all five scoring varsity runners have been under 18 minutes this season. Coach McDonald states, the team continues to make progress and improve on their times each week. The JV runners finished in second place with a team score of 93 points. Oliver House won the race in the season best 1827.7. Ben Redman was 17th place overall. 25th place was Alexis Laurent. 26th was Brady Harwood and 27th was Kenny Locke. The Lady Dragons finished 8th out of 22 teams with 222 points. The Dragons were led by freshman Elizabeth Crawford's 25th place finish in a season best 2042. Fellow freshman Nadia Fedronachik was 27th with a season best time of 2049. For Linden was 30th, Annika Russell 57th, Tyra Andrews 93rd to complete the scoring for Lake Orion. The Dragons are at the halfway point of the season with some key meets coming up. We'll have more cross-country coverage on future episodes. For Orient Today, I'm Ian Locke. For even more Lake Orient sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit YouTube.com and search for Orient Neighborhood Television. Also make sure to catch all of our replays Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. along with Saturdays at 1 p.m. We'll see you next time. All right, great stuff, Joey and Ian. Uh, boy, it's tough watching those Adams highlights. Uh, that was a, that was a tough one to be at. I was on the sideline for that game, and uh, uh, like Orion was making it competitive through the first half, and then things fell apart in the second half. But like I said, they rebounded uh, this past Friday against Stony Creek. Uh, Joey tells us that they're still in the running to make the playoffs. Yes. So. Let's cross Let's our Do fingers. this, Dragons. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that playoff high school yeah. football is a blast. That's a yes. lot of fun. And I love being on the sideline with my camera uh, shooting the highlights. That's And, yep. and homecoming is so much fun. The crowd yes. really gets into it. So they're going to be hosting Clarkston for homecoming. Yep. Let's cross our fingers and hope they come away with a win at homecoming. Yes. Uh, that's always a good time. It's such a fun game. And one of the things I love about Lake Orion, too, is that community members come out to the football games, even even if you don't have a student at the high school, it's kind of yeah. like an event and brings everybody together. It's just, it's a lot of fun. Now, another thing that's going to be taking place, uh, well, first of all, this Sunday uh, is the homecoming parade. Yes, 3.30. Uh, 3.30, downtown yeah. Lake Orion. Uh, and then they have homecoming activities throughout the week, but mm -hmm. probably the most popular event, short of the actual homecoming game on Friday, is the Powder Puff game. Oh, Are you familiar with the, yes. the Powder Puff game? Yes. We yes, record the, the Lake Orion Powder Puff game between the juniors and the seniors, and it is consistently one of the most viewed videos that we have on YouTube. Yeah. Thousands and thousands <laughs> of views. People love their Powder Puff football. I'll fun. look at our YouTube analytics uh, for, say, the past week or the past month, and number one would be like the show that got the most views is 2018 Powder Puff. <laughs> like, what? Like, what happened that year? Yeah. Is a, well, I remember there was yeah. one year where there was like a fight broke out oh during the Powder Puff football game. Oh, so that was a big drop. Yeah. <laughs> I think we, we tried to 
cut it down as much as we could, but that was that was pretty crazy. But yeah, yeah powder puff is really yes. popular. So, ladies, uh, we are going to be with uh, at the powder puff game with our cameras again this Thursday. So be ready. Yes. Give us a good game, and then of course. Uh, homecoming on Friday so yes, really excited. next week next week Thursday yep. and Friday yeah so, yeah. yeah so yeah, Powder Puff was fun I know my daughters they they got to play their junior year senior year it didn't happen with all the COVID the COVID stuff but it is yeah. it's a fun fun event yeah so so that's just some stuff that's coming up I don't know if that's included in this week's quick hits package but uh Becky's gonna give us uh, a look at some activities you can look forward to over the next week or so On Thursday, the Orient Library will be hosting an all-ages makerspace workshop. The program will run from 6 to 8 p.m. in meetings rooms A and B. Come play, experiment, and learn with a variety of creative technology projects for adults, teens, and children. For more information, visit orientlibrary.org. Back to School Movie Night will be held at Children's Park this Friday at 7.30. The movie will begin at dusk. Bring your chairs, blankets, and get cozy. This year, the movie of the night is Smallfoot. For more information, visit downtownlakeorient.org. You won't want to miss the Made in the Mitten Art and Craft Show this Saturday at the Orient Center from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Start your holiday shopping early with this one-of-a-kind unique arts and craft show featuring distinctive and classic Made in the Michigan products. Made by Michiganders for Michiganders. Admission and parking is free. The Lake Orient High School will be kicking off homecoming week with a parade in downtown Lake Orient on Sunday. The parade begins at 2.30. Wear your school spirit gear and cheer on those dragons. Now let's take a look at this week's weather. Wednesday's forecast is calling for mostly cloudy skies with a high of 54 and low of 38. Sunny on Thursday with a high of 61 and low of 41. Sunny again on Friday with a high of 66 and low of 44. Mostly sunny on Saturday with a high of 70 and low of 47. And partly cloudy on Sunday with a high of 70 and low of 46. Well, that's it for this week's Owen TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Uh, we did notice that uh, when, when Becky was talking about the homecoming parade, the time listed was 2.30, but I believe if you're in downtown Lake Orion, uh, the parade actually starts at 3.30. So 2.30 right. might be uh, the gathering time where everyone has to gather. Now, traditionally, they gather at Blanche Sims, but as you pointed out, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of construction with the new elementary school right. in the back there. So don't know if they're still gathering at Blanche Sims, but if you want to see the parade, it'll be coming right down Flint Street. Um, making a right turn on Broadway Street and ending at the Eamon Center. So yes. uh, it's always fun to see. It is a fun event. So. Yeah. Yep. So, gosh, October is just a few days away. Um, it, what is it, Saturday is October 1st? Or yes, yes. I think it October is. 1st. And uh, like I said, we're, we're in the, the fall uh, Halloween season. And my, uh, my niece texted me today. She's like, what are some of your favorite scary movies to watch for Halloween? And I'm like, oh, that's, <laughs> that's right up my alley. So oh, see, I'm my, not a scary movie. <laughs> no, you don't. No, even this no. time of the year, that's no, the best time of the year to no. watch that stuff. <laughs> my all-time favorite spooky movie to watch uh, when Halloween rolls around is a movie called Fright Night. Uh, it came out in 1985. I remember seeing it in a the theater, and it was a lot of fun. And it was just scary enough. And <laughs> those are some of my favorite scary movies is when there's some humor mixed in with yes. the scares. Yeah. So you're laughing and you're scared. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I remember the movie Scream when that came that out. Was, yeah, that's a perfect the example. The trailers, though, for those movies, they were a little deceiving because I thought, ooh, this is going to be a fun movie. Let's go see it. And, oh, <laughs> it was not what I expected. <laughs> well, that, that sort of revolutionized us, uh, ushered in a new era of horror movies where they became kind of self-aware. and. Right. What was fun about Scream is they would talk about all the all the classic tropes of horror movies they would discuss in the movie as yeah. these things <laughs> happened in the movie and oh. uh, that was a lot of fun. Yes. That was that was a fun one. So speak for yourself. <laughs> My friend whoever I don't even remember who I was with at that movie probably lost part of his or her arm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and the other misleading thing with that movie, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Scream, which came out, what, 20, 25 oh. years ago. Uh, I remember there was all the, the big deal about Drew Barrymore being in the movie, and I thought she was going to be the star of the movie. And right. 
five minutes into it, you're like, I guess she's not the star <laughs> of the movie. Right. So, <laughs> so if you want a list of uh, spooky movies to see, contact me on Facebook. I'll, I'll give you some yeah. suggestions to watch. So, uh, Tracy, another great show. Thanks for joining yes. me today. Thanks for having me. And we'll see you uh, next week when you're in for another episode of Tea with Tracy. Sounds fantastic. And we'll see you in two weeks on the uh, next it's episode. Uh, four weeks. Is it four weeks? Yep. We're not doing one in two weeks? there is okay. one in two weeks. Oh, thanks for yeah. catching me. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see you on the next episode of Orient Today live. We'll see you soon. Thanks Bye. for watching.